Tell it, we don't need the location switch, you know. Anyway, hello. We are Woolly Elephant. I'm Heather. And I'm Nikki. Uh, this is episode 34. We think we've got it the right way around last time. We had episode 33 and we wrote 32. and uh, But we were 33. So this is episode 34 from a yet another hot, hot sticky morning in uh, Chorley in Lancashire. Um... You might hear more of me than Nikki today. Joseph is currently playing on the floor with in the just in the near future until Nikki comes back to work and he goes to nursery. We might have to do more of one than the other next time. It might be more Nikki than it is me, so because he's quite a distraction. Yeah. Um, we'll bring him up later on, but we don't want him. Don't necessarily want him up here <coughs> through the whole video in case it uh, is too much. To too distracting for anybody so Nicky might keep looking at him but I'll try not to because <laughs> he's a happy chappy anyway it's the what's the date today it's the 11th of July it's yeah it's a uh, Wednesday the 11th of July hopefully I'll get this done tonight and up for Thursday um Joseph is officially six months old six months old today my dad is seeing his surgeon today so hopefully we'll get a date on his operation, mm. uh, if he's going to get the operation, if, if and when it's going to happen. So, um, it's all happening today, really. Not looking forward to work. I'm dressed in black because I wear black mostly for work. I normally wear a white chef jacket, but it's it's too heavy and it's just too hot at the moment. So, I'm, oh, in, too hot. I'm in black. I'm wearing the same as, as all my little minions. <laughs> yeah, at the moment, all the skivvies, <laughs> because it's, it's a little bit cooler. And wearing the white jacket. People keep saying to me, have you been demoted? Thinking, what? What are you talking about? Because I've not got my white cup jacket on as opposed to, I've got a black top on instead. I, I must have been demoted. Makes me laugh. I look at them like the nuts, which most of them are probably half the time. Yeah. Anyway, I so what, yeah, we've got, <laughs> I've fidget, finished objects. We've got, um, I've got one that's nearly done. I've got something I'm going to frog. I've got plenty of wool that is on the website and I'll give you a quick run through near the end. Uh, we'll probably give you a bit of a Nikki a life update at the end, a bit of general chit chat at the end. So if you don't want to stay for that, you don't have to. Uh, but I think that's about it. Not a huge lot to show because it's been so hot. It's been um, 30. A lot of the days, they keep telling us it's going to be 23, 24 degrees, but it's not. It's been in the, in the chippy, it's... 28, 29, 29 on a good day, 31 on not such a good day, which is about, I believe, 89, 88, 89, 90 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. No thanks. No air conditioning in a stuffy chippy every day, and it's, I will admit, it's grinding me down. Yeah, it um, will do. So I'm starting to feel tired, feel textured, forget things, as you might have noticed in the last episode, I can't remember anything. Mm. But, anyway, so... Before we digress it into a load of blather, you can hear Joseph, he's like blowing raspberries to the world. I have got one finished object. I've mainly, not done a huge lot of knitting, but I've mainly been concentrating on getting my mix and match cardigan finished. And I've finally done it. I've, got, I've only got to get some buttons and put some buttons on. It needs washing um, and it needs blocking. I'm, although I don't know if I'm going to block it, I'm just going to try and lay it flat because it's not... It's not um, it's not wool. It's I'm sure I've missed many a time, but there you go. It's a Sardar Harap tweed. It was I paid about one pound ninety something a bowl, and I've only used um, six fifty grams, three hundred grams. I can't believe I've knitted a, a cardigan for me in three hundred grams. I normally need at least six, at least six. Um, so it's obviously quite light. It's got good yardage. It's. 155 metres or 170 yards to the 50 gram ball, which is quite light really. 40% uh, nylon, 10% wool, 24% acrylic and 6% viscose. I will admit I can feel at the moment the 10% wool. If I put it on with bare arms, I can feel it itch. I can feel it itch a bit. Um, but I'm hoping that'll soften when I wash it. So... But I'll mostly probably have like these on, like long sleeves on yeah. underneath. But if not, I am planning on making another one in wool so it'll be softer. I didn't expect this to itch with it being mostly acrylic mm. and nylon. But anyway, here we go. 
and we're finished. You could do either a shawl collar or a flat collar, uh, a flat uh, yeah. rib, button band. And I've done the flat. I didn't want the shawl. I'll put it on, but only <laughs> briefly. Briefly, yeah. The only thing I find is if I just put it on without checking it, I have to rearrange it, go stand in front of a mirror and rearrange it to get it to sit right. I've never knitted a top down before and I find if I can't just throw it on, that's going to get on me. I've got to admit that's going to get on my nerves, otherwise this raglan seam is going to be, be up here. So it's got to... Definitely got to look what you're doing to get it on right, which I don't know, maybe it's just this yarn, maybe it's me, I don't know. But anyway, there we go. It just needs buttons. So there's there's only one traily bit and that's I've left attached for putting buttons on. Let me just move the camera back a little bit. I've done the high-low hem. I've got to admit, I really like that. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot because um, I like things longer at the back. This will obviously, I'll pull it, stretch it down a bit when I wash it. And this bit is obviously where I've done the button band. It's curling, it's, it's curling in a bit, but that should, again, should flatten out when I wash it because it's doing it here as well. But I did the sleeves. I, I altered, as alterations, I did change the sleeves because I thought with the amount of rows she had down and the, for the decreases, it would have been... It'd have been down to the end of my fingers. So I shortened that and I still could probably turn them turn them up. Oh god, I'm boiling now. I'm absolutely boiling, Joseph. I so I could turn them up and they still be. But it's done. Um I haven't knitted me anything, a jumper. For, I'd say for ages. I did that cable card. <laughs> Sorry about that. You don't want to see me uh, strip up. I am absolutely boiling. I've only had that for 30 seconds and I'm dying. The heat. The only so I love the cardigan. The only thing I don't like about it is the fact it's not. I can't just put it on and it just sit there. I'm going to have to play around with it to to get it to sit right. I'm hoping that maybe when I've washed it, that'll be that'll change. And I also think, even though the wool the yarn is really light, lightweight, you feel like that weighs nothing. Oh yeah, next to nothing. It, it weighs nothing. Yeah, it weighs nothing. I feel like because there's no seams on the on the sleeves, I think it will probably grow a bit. It'll stretch. Yeah. I feel like it'll be stretched because the whole point of things that are seamed together is to give a garment structure um, and and stability. Stability, yes, yeah, to to help stop that happening. So. But I'm going to do one in wool as well, and that'll be heavier, no doubt, because I think to knit it in wool, for me to knit it in the merino I'm thinking of knitting in, I probably need four, four or five, whereas I've only needed 300 grams for that one. But if you send my wool on me on our Etsy shop at all, it's I fancy doing one in the, the daughter's love at the moment. I want to do one in my Victorian teacup. Uh, but I want to do more first. I want to do one in the Daughter's Love, which is all like royal blue and navy, and yeah. it's a really pretty colour. And I'm seeing it knitted up in four ply because I originally dyed the colourway for a um, friend at work for her mum called Daughter's Love because she was knitting. She's knitting a shawl for her mum. Gosh, sorry, I'm only talking. I'm dreading to think what it's going to be like during the day at work. Anyway, the, the short, the pattern is Mina Phillips um, changes cardigan. She's knitting expat designs on Ravelry and it's a paid for pattern. Yeah. I did the size 44 inch chest, which knits up at a 46 and I got it. Ooh. I've just measured it this morning. It's obviously not been washed, but I'm not going to stretch it out. It's just going to be washed and laid flat. Um, if it grows, it'll, I'll probably put it in the tumble dryer for... <laughs> For a minute or two. It says I can tumble dry this on low, so if necessary, I'll put it in the tumble dryer for 20 minutes or something. That might help it not come back. Bad. But I'm I'm not going to do that initially. I'm going to lay it out flat. It should dry quite fast because it's quite light. But and uh, it's like, boiling. Like I said, I knitted it on a 44. The gauge was 20 stitches to 28 rows, and I got 19 stitches 
to tw and 27 rolls. In the pattern it says knit on a 4 mil for the rib and a 4 and no, a 3.75 for the rib and a 4 mil for the body. I knitted on a 4 mil for the rib and a 4.5 mil for the body. I did. Um, because I found my tension. Since I've been letting, knitting lots of socks, my tension's got tighter. So, but I I've just measured me. I've just done it because I didn't do a tension swatch, but I've just measured it now. And I, I was only, I think, one stitch out and one and one row off, uh, which is not bad really. And I'll probably get them because that's her measurements after blocking. So by the time I've washed it, that'll probably be, be right anyway. So go me, <laughs> Team Birkin. <laughs> so those are the, I knitted them on my Sim Knit Pro. Symphonies, keep them in, in my uh, Knitting I Love pouch. And this is in my Minute Pro Symphonies I got for Christmas. This is an interchangeable set that they brought out for Christmas on the... The beautiful. On the multicoloured wood. I like knitting on the bam these multicoloured bamboo ones. They're, they're really smooth. The numbers wear off really fast, so you need a needle sizer. That's really bad. Um, they wore off the first... Within the first few rows, they wore off, which is, I think, pretty rubbish. Um... I want cables a bit springy, but hey ho, they did the job. I quite liked them. They're nice for knitting. Yes. Now I've got a baby down there smiling away at me, knitting the jumpers. So that's my only first and only finished object. So I'm glad that's off now because I want to do another one. Not necessarily that one straight away. That's what you want. Um, but I definitely want to knit another jumper. And I've got all these magazines and patterns. I've got knit, Knitting Expats Parisian Dreams one that's done in fingering weight with like a lacy front. That looks really pretty. I'm trying to decide whether I want to do do that next. But I've also seen a couple of other jumpers. Do you know I am the most indecisive person in the world? I've probably got about at least six different ones that I want to do. I don't know whether to just fold them up, chuck them in a, a hat, pull one out it. and then say... <laughs> Why don't you pick the yarn you want to use and then decide on a pattern? That's what I do. I no. find the yarn I want to use and then go no. and decide what pattern. I have to I pick a pattern. I have to pick a pattern. I can do that with the kids. I can do that with the kids. I can pick out... Well, I haven't got any sweat of quantities right. of yarn. I've got enough to do... I have enough in the shop, but I don't want to take it out of the shop, to do the daughter's... The blue cardigan, another one of those, in the merino. I've got enough in the shop. I could buy it, take it out of the shop. But I've also bought some yarn to dye specifically for that, so I can dye... So I can dye that to do that. But I'm hanging on, because if I find another double-knit cardigan or jumper that I want to knit I've got it there and I can dye that yeah to do that all the decisions <laughs> tell you I used to be indecisive but now I just can't get my mind up and I'm finding that in all walks of life I don't know whether it's just the heat that's getting to me all the time I just can't make my mind up on anything I'll go in I needed a new pair of sketches and I went to the sketcher shop and there were so many and I wanted so many of them because he says, is there anything you want? And I saw so many that I liked. I just walked out. Because yeah, he says, well, you're not that. getting a pair. I said, you, well, I want a pair, but I can't make my mind up which ones I want. Yeah. So I'll not buy any. If I can't make my mind up, I won't buy any. And then I sit at home thinking, well, I could have got them ones. I could have got them ones. <laughs> Drive myself nuts. <laughs> Crazy. Do you ever find that yourself? Anyway, that, <laughs> that's that one done. Uh, Joseph's making a phone call at the moment on his Fisher Price phone. He's loving his phone. He's saying, Ring Grandad. Ring Grandad. Thank you. Sorry, if distracted. You might actually go to sleep. Anyway, right. Um, project I've almost finished. I was just doing these this morning I, and I've done everything except kitchen and stitching because I thought I might film um, just a little vlog on how I do that for anybody that's interested in that because I, I don't think I've done that yet. So that was the original one. I've not brought my sock blockers in. So that was the original one. Here's the one I've just finished this morning. I've done uh, a true afterthought heel where you cut it cutting. That's what the marker, there was another marker this side as well. Um, where you just knit a tube. When you get to where you think you want your heel, you just put a couple of markers in. You can also do that by knitting in a, a different yarn, piece of yarn. And instead of cutting it, you just take that extra piece of waste yarn out. But I just cut it in. If you do it, I've tried doing that on DPNs, yeah. and it's hard work because you've got two needles in the stitches. Whereas if you do it on like the magic loop, you can pull the pull it onto the wires, and it's a heck of a lot easier. 
It's not my stitches aren't tight. So I'd recommend if you're going to do, if anybody's going to do a cutting afterthought heel, do it on Magic Loop on a wire for the cutting because it's easy, a heck of a lot easier than doing it with the two needles stuck in the in the needles. So there you go. So that's number one and number two completed. This was in my own my um, my first self striping colourway. Can you remember what I called it? Tropical, tropical delight was it? Delight or paradise or something. Something like that. Like that. I, can't I think it's tropical delight. There is one available on in the shop. I've done sixty four stitch cast on my tension uh, two point two five magic loop. Ten my tension is really quite tight on those. I have pulled it quite tight on those. Um, I just do a basic uh, toe where you just decrease it either side, and that, on this heel. You basically just do the same as you would do if you look at the toe. It's basically the same for the heel. Tropical cocktail. That's it, tropical cocktail. So you would do the same as you would do. You find that daughter's love deep, okay, and then I can show it. On the uh, toe as you would for the heel. So that so they match. So they're basically the same. So if I hold it like that, you can see they look the same. Um it's a it's a very basic, simple heel. Um you can see how to do did Barbara show that on Knitting Our Love? She shows you how to do the cutting heel. I've got a little video showing how I did my first cutting heel after watching Barbara on Knitting Our Love show how to do the cutting heel. If you want to know how to do that. Um, so all I've got to do is kitchen them out together and then they are finished. So I'll have a new pair of socks. Um, that's the Daughter's Love uh, colourway I was referring to, if you can see that. Hang on, without the pictures on the wall in the blues. It's not a very good picture that. Can you get a bit of picture? There we are. I'm thinking I might do my other cardigan in. That's what I'm thinking of doing. So there you go. Uh, so that's that. So that's almost a finished object. So that's it, baby. So in the next couple of days, in the next couple of yeah, this is what I'm planning on doing my next cardigan in, in this colourway. It's real pretty. Um, it is really nice. Like I say, we're seeing the shawl knitted up in the fingering weight version at the moment. Uh, which is looking really nice. So that's that one. That's the ball of wool. Gobstopper ball. Like I can say I'm knitting on two point, these ones I'm knitting on 2.25, higher, higher sharps. I love these needles. I find the, on these ones, you can get a bit of a kink that stays in the needle, in the, in the cord I found, but they are really nice. They're very smooth. The wool, they go through the stitches really smoothly, much more smoothly than any others I've tried. I've tried Addy, I've tried Addy, I've tried Knit Pro, um, Knit Pro was a, were, were the worst. We won't even talk about Knit Pro. No, uh, the fix, Knit Pro Zings for doing that, they were they were awful, they just kept catching. I've done Magic Loop on those Knit Pro Symphonies, that was better, mm. that was better, because uh, I did I did the sleeves Magic Loop and they went through that, no problem. Oh, sorry. They didn't keep catching, only ever so slightly every now and then, but with the higher highers, they've never caught at all. It's really smooth. Um, so I'm really pleased with those. The Addy ones I had caught. Um, what else have I tried? Have I tried any others? No. I want to try those. I want to try the, the which one? Like, like it. it. Okay. I, I want to try the Cheer Goo in the. Yeah. I've, I use the Cheer Goo 9 inch circlers, which I really like them. But I haven't tried them on the uh, Magic Loop yet. I will in the future. So that's my, do you, that's that one I've nearly finished. So work in progress is, do you want to show yours that you're doing or do you need to get to the end of a row? I just need to get to the end of the row. You need to get to the end. Mm -hmm. Right, another one I've got that you haven't seen that I've started because like I need to start another pair of socks. They only, only have three or four on the go as it is. Not I'm, enough, obviously. No, I'm doing a pair of Rose City Rollers. That's what they're called, isn't it? Yeah. Roll City Rollers. Um, in some leftovers, the pink was from Fluff Shop, Rusty Ferret Yarn from Fluff Shop, that I used on, um, what did I use it on? Which one? Was a scarf, on? the pink one. I used it on a woven scarf I did. I haven't had them looking out for ages. I need to get that out. It's far too hot for looming. It's, it's, less, it's less hot for looming than it is for knitting. Is it? Because you're not actually handling the wool. Oh, right, okay. Right. Whereas knitting, you're handling it, looming, you're just putting it through, dragging the thing down, through, drag it down, you're not handling, you're not getting hot. You might get a bit of hot from the action, but not from handling the wool. Yeah, where are you going? Um, he's, he's off to the kitchen to make dinner. The purple I got in a swap from 
Christy on Relatively Crafty podcast. We did a bit of a swap. This was with our leftovers. This was, I think it was, I don't know what's happened. She did put the ball band in the middle, but it's vanished. I think it's Desert Vista Die Works. Was it Desert No. I think one of them was. One of them was that she sent. I don't know whether it was this one or another one. I can't remember. If Christy, if you're watching, will you comment underneath? Can you remember what it is? Because <laughs> I can't remember. Because I've lost the ball band bit. But that's it's going to be purple stripes. And I've done it without pink because I thought it would look quite funky. So I'm looking forward to see I'm looking forward to seeing these done. I'm doing these on two these are Lang needles. DPNs. DPNs is my preference, and these are 2.5 millimetres. Now these it seemed a bit odd knitting with these than my usual DPNs to start with because they're quite blunt. But they're very smooth. And I'm liking I'm quite liking knitting on those. And I've uh, never knitted with lang needles before. So they are quite mm. they are blunt. Mm. They are quite a blunt mm. tip. So it's a bit it's a bit easier on my fingers. Excuse I do me. prefer the sharper awesome. tip, but these are really nice, quite lightweight as well. I'm just so used to knitting on really sharp ones because I've used the high high sharps, um, bamboo ones. So that's the uh, that's a fluff shop yarn, yeah. rusty ferret. Um, mm. I haven't got the label for that either. I don't know where that went. Do you know? Sometimes put the labels in the middle and they fall out, and it's just... never to be seen again. But they're both 75, 25. The pink ones are higher twist in my welly bob bag by Nikki. I love my welly bob bag. So that's that one. Are you ready? I'm ready. Go on. Just watching before you haul that off the sofa. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Um, Where do you think you're going? I started last week. Think? I think it was last week. It's very recent anyway. What are you? Um, knitting a jumper for... <laughs> <laughs> for Michael for Christmas. Um, I'm doing the mix and match sweater I've done for him before but I'm doing it in the plain oh, run off. doing it in the plain yarn plain it's brown hopefully it's not gross so um I've done all the increases for the show for the sleeves and I just literally cast off for the sleeves yesterday well put them on stitch holder so I wanted to make sure it was done before we did this podcast because it looks a bit silly all scrunched up uh, so now I'm just on to uh, the body. I'm not sure if I have to do any more increases or anything because um, I'm doing age four to six because my son's a giant. So, and I'm doing this in Stylecraft Double DK. Sorry. Sorry. Double DK. Double knitting. Double knitting in uh, the special base. And it's in shade khaki, 1027. And we, I was doing a crochet along. We were doing a lily pond crochet along. And I, I did quite a bit of it. Yeah, so did I, but neither of us did it, did no, we? No, we never, neither of us finished it. And I still had all the wool left over because we both bought the big packs of yarn for it from um, Attic 24. Was yeah, it? We, yeah, we bought the sets for it. We had to wait a while to get them. We got going and we got under good steam and we did quite a few pieces. Yeah. And then I got, I'm not a crochet. I'll do, I don't mind doing a bit of crochet, but that was a lot of crochet. I've still got them all. I see. So my idea is I'm going to knit one for Michael, knit one for Josie, and I'm going to knit one for my little cousin Daisy as well. And I can't decide on her colour. It's either going to be very pink or yellow. Yeah, do a yellow and turquoise to match that dress that Nanny made. Mm. So. My mum's got back into sewing, which is great. Because Lily is getting, Lily, Daisy, is getting some, <laughs> some really pretty dresses. So that's what I was thinking of doing. That, this is all I've been doing. It's all I've had the brain capacity for at the moment. So that's that. What are you need to do? I've just said 4.5mm mm. higher, higher. The only problem I ha I've been having is, look, and you see, it keeps untwisting. So my yarn keeps catching. I can, I can uh, solve that for you. And I was in... I take this to work. I'll, I'll, I'll add more into it later. I've got another job, but I can take this to work with me. And I was knitting along on it last night, and um, the stitches were catching. And I'm like, why are they catching? I ain't got time for this. 
And then it will come on screwed. It only ever does it on one meal, never does it on both. And I use those rubber grippy things. And they still come undone. Have you got one of those pink things? Yeah, I've several came in this kit. I got this, this was, I showed this at Christmas. This was the Knit Pro needle set I was referring to that I got for Christmas. How do you use them? You put it, you yeah, know, I think it works on the high highs as well. You put it in that hole there. And then you get your rubber, th rubber thing, hold that, yeah. and then twist. I mean, I don't need a rubber thing on here, but just twist and it tightens it up. Oh, so, right. I have several of them, it came with a few. Oh, can I keep it then? Yeah. Oh, thanks. See well, that, that really irritated Have another two there. Um, Where are you going, young man? Well, I've just done, I've just uh, cast, put the um, stitches on Where's yarn. So now, <laughs> I've knitted one row, so now I just need to read the pattern to see where I need to go. I didn't want to do the texture pattern again, I just wanted something plain and simple. So. That's it. That this is all I've brought today, so I apologise. But I'm sure Mum's got plenty to show when she's finished playing with child. Come in. Sorry. Oh gosh. Got a sweat on now, getting down on the floor. Right. So, what else have I got? Done that one. Done that one. Oh, I think I thought you might like to see. Right. These are the other two pairs of socks I showed that I'd completed last week. Not completed. I'd completed one. One of each. Last week, um, let me just root it out. These are in my other well, another welly bob bag, a zip up one, like makeup bag from Nikki. I've done completed this one last week. Oh, no, no. Trouble. <laughs> um, these were the Rose City roller basically pattern, but I did a cuff as opposed to a rolled edge. Anyway, I started the next one. I've been doing, I've been doing these magic yeah. loop in the other pouch, but. With the heat, and I just can't. I've done turning the heel. I turn a heel. I like to do a heel flap and gusset. I can turn a heel on Magic Loop, but it's it's a serious faff. I don't know if anybody else knows how to do it an easy way, but you're having to have the wool use the, the wire pulled out in a couple of different places. These are higher, higher sharps again. They've changed since I got those ones last. They've changed the cord on the sock sizes to to green which and it's a better cord um these are 2.25s um which i love knitting on but trying to turn because my markers i've lost i was doing it while i was travel knitting and i've got a marker that side and then i lost the marker that side and i only need to put the other marker back in but i just got fed up trying i think so i'm gonna i've been waiting to carry on till i finished my tropical delight stripey socks oh no i've done yeah, because I did those on my DPNs, not me, not Magic Loop, and then I switched it to that Magic Loop just to do that last bit. I think I picked that. Up. Yeah, that needle up just to do the heel on the Magic Loop. So I'm going to put transfer this to DPNs to do the heel, and then I'll put it back on the Magic Loop. So I would have done this by now. I just got fed up. I got fed up wrestling with it on the because you have to pull it a bit out here and a bit out, here, and it's just not designed to do heel flap and gutter. I don't think on. On, on Magic Loop at all. I've never been the biggest fan of Magic Loop. I'm better with it than I was, and I do it more than I did. But I still, it drives me nuts trying to do that. And that is my heel of choice. I find it fits me a lot better than any other. Um, so that was that one. That was Cuddle Buns yarn. I, I referred to that in the last episode. So if you're interested in that, just go back. It's in the show notes. Um, and then the other one I did, this was in my own and I had Victorian teacup colourway on my Polworth yarn because I wanted a pair of socks in Polworth to see how they wear so I can let you know how well that wears and I was doing, I did them on 9 inch magic, uh, magic 9 inch circulars, Michigu circulars now I have no trouble turning the heel on that uh, on those at all um, but I was doing this while we were travelling in the car and I was boiling hot and then it's only when I got home and I realised my pattern has completely gone tits up. I'm sure we're used to the word tits at the moment if you've been watching all this tits out collective thing. I should have done a colourway for that. Um, but there you go. The pattern here, I've missed doing a pattern block there and a pattern block here. And it's. I originally started off, 
I didn't. I forgot that I was. It was playing at the back, and I carried on doing the pattern all the way around. And I thought, well, never mind. It's only that bit. I'll just carry on. It's only for me, so I'm not bothered. And then, then totally messed it up. Did my pattern completely wrong. So, I will be frogging those back to the rib. Oh God, I'm out of puff. I am. So... Where's it called? So, that's those. What's that there? That's what it so that's that's that one. So that's. That's two pairs of socks, three pairs of socks to be going on with, and I made an acquisition a week or so ago, because I fancy doing it. I really want to do some proper colour work. I'm going to start picking up the Christmas stocking I've showed previously. I want to pick that back up and do a bit more on that. Now I've finished my cardigan, I really wanted to get that out of the way. I can pick that up and do a bit more. I fancy doing... I've looked at this book so many times when it popped up on Amazon and thought, I really want that. Because I want to do some colour work. I really want a colour work cardigan or jumper. Cardigan, I fancy a cardigan because I wear cardigans more than jumpers. But I'm a bit like that about steaking at the moment. <laughs> I want to do it, but I want to be comfortable in my colour work before I, branch out, before I do that. I've been watching quite a few videos by Arnie and Carlos over the last few days. Who do all colour work and they show some fabulous... Uh, some fabulous sweaters and things, jumpers. But I saw this book, Op Art Socks, and it's got all these, the socks with all these patterns on. It shows them all in black and white here. And then as you go through and you see the socks, it's like illusion type socks. And then you go through and you see some of the sock patterns are fabulous. I really want to have a go. I did one pair of colour work socks, but I picked completely the wrong completely the wrong yarn to do with them and I've wore them three times and I'm practically gone through the heel already so I just wear them for bed now but there's some fabulous they're like illusion type patterns um on the socks which I think look great but it's mostly it's mostly all done in colour work and I uh so if you ever fancied doing look at them they look like bricks so if you ever fancied doing some colour work socks. These look, I think these look really cool. Some of these look really cool. They do look really cool. Um, so I want to do a pair out of, I want to do a pair out of here. That's just deciding which ones I want to do. I quite like these. I quite like them. So I might do them. It's either going to be them or these are the ones that are on the cover of the book. I quite like these as well. Because they're nice and bright. I think they look like they're done with a gradient yarn. And there's two different gradient yarns. Um, but there's some quite interesting effects. Some of them are just, they've just done the, the effect on plain. You know, just in one colour. Look, I don't, I don't want to do that. I want to do some funky patterns like these. I like the ones in the But I think it's a choice between those ones and the other ones I showed. I quite like them brickwork ones as well. They'd be quite cool for... Your dad, mm. or even your dad, yeah. um, for Christmas or something. So watch this space. <laughs> but I don't want to cast them on until I've at least cast two of those off. So, so I'll only have because I've got three pro, three sock projects on the go, and I only want two at the most at a time. So I need to cast at least two of them off before I cast another one on. <sighs> she says that should be casting on later. I think. I think that's it. I did a bit on my changes show. I'll show it. Um, but my mum, like I said, my mum's itching for me to, to see more of this. And I want to get this done. But this is, again, it's a big piece to be knitting on when it's so hot. Yeah. And uh, so you get another, pa yeah, another pouch. If you haven't got these yet, you really need to. Um, I had to frog. I did a bit of this wrong, so I had to frog it a bit. Um, this is the third section, section C. So I've got, I think, one, two, three, four colours in there so far. See it quite well there. So I've six colours to go on that, yeah. It's looking really good, that But every now and then I pick it up, put a bit more on. Um, that's the section Nikki's doing on hers at the moment. And obviously that's the centre section. So I'm really liking the colours on the knees. So that's, but I've, like I say, I've only put, I think I've only put two colours on that. In that section since I showed you and there's 10 colours use the same 10 colours in each section um, 
so maybe I'll pick that up a bit more. Everything's really been mostly been put on hold to get the cardigan done because I'm for when it comes to jumpers and sweaters and cardigans, I'm one for I'll knit half of it and then get bored and put it away. I didn't want to do that this time. I wanted to get it done. I keep seeing everybody else knitting all these, excuse me, all these jumpers and sweaters. It amazes me. I mean, they get so many done, especially with some of the work, the jobs, you know, when they're working full time and things, which I obviously do as well. And I'm dying. More of my time, a bit more of my time that I used to spend knitting is now I've been dying yarn. Um, I have? Yes. Yeah, he's joking to me. Um, so, as you will see when I show a few wools. So, so I'll, show, I'll show them now. So if you're not interested in seeing them, it's been lovely chatting. I'll show these and then Nikki's going to do, she wants to chat about Jeff and Waffle. Waffly things. Yeah, chit chat at the end, if you want to see that. So I just thought I'd run through them. These are all on the shop. We put them on the last, we put them in the update on Thursday. Thursday. I got them all in on Thursday night. So they've been getting quite a bit of uh, like. So this one, oh, God, I should get me, Hold on, I'll get, it get the website up. I can't remember what I called them. I'll rely on Nikki for that. This is a really pretty aqua colour um, with speckles on the, on the pale section in blue, red and violet. So there you go. That's that one. Blue, red and blue. I think. Very nice. Fairy dust, yeah, I can't think of a name. So that got fairy dust. So that's that one. That's really pretty. Nice summery colourway. Um, that's on. I've decided to name my yarn bases. That's on fancy pants. Uh, this was, we named the main fingering weight ones after knickers, basically. So this is fancy pants. My, my posh one, this is the poshest one. It's a slightly higher twist. Um, it's really soft. And it's a bit more, what I would call, Drapey. It yeah. is, which you can see, it's a bit more floppy than the last, than the other one I've got, which is a bit more poofy. <laughs> uh, so this is the, this is the, this is called the Fancy Pants range, uh, sock yarn. It's still a seventy-five twenty-five, but it is lovely and soft. It's lovely and soft, but this one I think would be nice. It would be especially nice in shawls and anything that needs a bit of drape. Be perfectly good in socks. <coughs> lovely soft socks. Yes, it would. But that's the Fancy Pants range. And then, as, as is this one, this one I called Cookie Cutters. I remember this one. It, you because I was, there was a, I got, Nikki had sent me a little video of Michael making cookies. He was cutting cookies. And he had like a tropical t shirt yeah, yeah, on with palm did. trees. And it, it was in like um, an aquary, an aquary colour. But he's got orangey hair and he was doing, just for some of the different colours in the picture is. Is what I pulled out from that. This is not aqua, it's more mint, but I thought it fitted in with the picture quite well. I love that one. Again, this one's this one with this is on my fancy pants, fancy pants base, which is a lovely colour. I've also done that in I've got I've done a couple of minis in that one as well. What's that one? Uh, this one is on the fancy pants as well. This is a, a yellow grey just like that's the the natural color yellow and gray i know lemon's a big thing this season so i thought i'd put a, so i've done a speckle black speckle in it so that's that one um oh, that's those this one i've done more kingfisher it looks a bit more blue like the, the proper color on here than it does on track on the picture it looks a bit more greeny but it is this is my best selling yarn. This one's on my Big Bloomers base, we've called this one. It's still a 7525, but it's a more plump, more plump yarn than the uh, than the fancy pants range. Um, so that one's gonna be their big bloomers, that's Kingfisher. Like I said, that's that's the this is the yarn I've sold more of than anything else this colourway. Uh, I've also done some minis with that one on that one as well, on the same base in 20 gram minis. And I've also done this one, I can't remember, I think I've called that Rust, I think, or something like that. She's disappeared now. But I've done that. I did it with the leftover orangey dye for the Kingfisher, so it matches perfectly. So if you wanted to do so, that, make a nice sock set, 
if you're interested in that or if you've bought that one already the 20 gram mini might be a good one to go for um what else do these two i've not actually put on the website i've decided to keep for myself because no matter how hard i tried when i was taking photographs of these i just could not get that looks pretty true on the video there to the color but when i was photographing it for love no money i could not get an accurate an accurate um picture for that color at all it came out more a lot more green or gray than it looks there so in the end i just thought stuff that if i can't get a, an accurate picture of the color i can't i can't sell it really because you're going to get something completely different than it looks on the picture but how it looks there you can see it there on the video is how it actually looks so i think that it's, it's totally my color so i'll probably knit something else something for me for that that is called I haven't given it a name, but that is on my granny pants base. This is a new base I've put in the shop. Um, we're calling it granny pants because that's the basic. We've got granny pants, big bloomers, so fancy pants, and then we've got uh, party. Par have we got party pants, was it, as well? Yeah. Or party drawers. I can't remember what we called it. Um, for, this, for the ones with sparkling. But this is granny pants. It's, a, it's, it's again, it's 75% wool, 25% nylon. It's not as soft as the other two. It would be excellent for socks. It feels a little bit more uh, hard wearing. I think it would be perfectly fine for shawls, although not as soft as the other ones. It'd be, I think it would be all right for cowls. Um, if you're not, it's not, it's not, doesn't feel, doesn't feel itchy, but it doesn't feel the soft as soft anywhere near as soft as the others it doesn't feel itchy to me but it doesn't feel as soft as any of the others as the other two but it feels more akin to if you've bought opal sock yarn or regia sock yarn or um what was the other one i've used rome wendy rome feels a bit more like a bit more like those like it would be a bit, that's how the the base that the suppliers state it, it would be excellent for more hard wearing item probably fine for cardigans and things like that as well but so i've done a few i've done a different couple of different colors on that way but that one at the moment unless somebody specifically said yeah i want that through seeing it on the video i can't put it on the shop because i just can't get a true representation of the color um this one i bought some 50 grams in my fancy pants range i've also bought some 50 gram sizes so what did I, this is butterfly house number 10 i think that's pretty. Um, it's a one-off. It started off, I was <laughs> trying to do a picture of a shell dog, which is black, a bit black and green with a red beak. And when I picked up a, I was doing another one at the same time, and I picked up my wooden stick to stir it, and it had some lilac dye on it. Oh, no. I didn't notice. So lilac dye went into it, and it made a perfectly pretty colour, but it's not one that I could recreate, I don't think. Well, I, I probably, I might be able to get something close to it, but... Uh, it ended up with lilac in it, which made a lovely colour. But I think I've only got two of these. I think I've either got two or three. It might be three of these. The 50 gram size, which would be, I thought would be good. Get some 50 grams for, if you want to make your own sock sets for 50 gram and a 20 gram. Yeah. Or if you're doing shawls where they've, you don't need 100 gram. Yeah. In each section, you might, because a lot of shawls you see, will be like three quarters one colour, won't they? And then there'll be another colour in, just in, in a few... Few a few bits or a bigger band at the end, um, which I was thinking. So I'll start doing a few. We'll see what kind of reception. As you can see, it's quite drapey, the fancy pants. Right. In that size, also, I've done a rainbow one. Oh, that's lovely. A rainbow we coloured one. I thought I've got to do a rainbow we coloured one. And I've also done this one. This has had the most likes on Instagram and everywhere, I think. It's uh, this one I've called uh, Lemon Ice. It's like an aqua colour, aqua greeny colour with yeah. lemon. A bit of lemon and grey in it. That's pretty. Which is a real pretty summery colour. This one again is on the granny pants. I did three of these, but then one, you'll see if you look on the shop, there is just one that's got a little speck of blue. It's pink and grey. I drop the colour on as opposed to speckle it on, because when you speckle it on, you, you, you're limited to the colour of the dye. Yeah. The 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 and it's quite concentrated and quite dark and I wanted soft pink so I've made the dye up and then dropped it on so it's very soft grey and pink 
speckles on that, but there is one that's got just one little about that big speck of blue. Just shows how when you're speckling the dye can float around. Mm. Um, but I've put that on the, the shop a bit cheaper. You could just cut the yarn and join it however you join it. Um, that's that one. This again is on granny pants. It's quite a plump yarn, this granny pants base, as you can see there. I've not wound it tight, but it's very squishy. This I was doing, trying to do like the, the other grey and yellow one, but it, it completely took up the colour and there was no real white left in it. So, um, without Nikki telling me the name, I can't remember what it is. Not doing her job here. Sorry, I'm falling asleep. That one, so she'll tell me what that one's called in a second. This one and this one. This has been, this is a real pretty one. I was trying to do a speckly yarn to match my Barbara colourway. This is Grello. Grello. Grey, yellow, Grello. That's a bit original, isn't it? I have never heard that name before. <laughs> uh, ignore the blue bits. These are these are what bits of yarn that I tied them up with and things so I could tell what base was what. This one. This is a nice speckly one in pinks and creams. Browns. What's this one called, Nick? Turkish Delight. Turkish Delight. That's on Fancy Pants. Fancy Pants base. You can tell just by feeling that. This is quite, It's a very smooth yarn, this one. Should get really good stitch definition with that. And then, then this one has been... Everybody seems to really like this one. I this is Michael's paint box, isn't it? Michael's paint, yeah. Michael's paint box for that one. This one, has get, this is getting a lot of likes. We know people aren't buying a lot at the moment because of the weather. It's summer. But this one's getting a lot of love. Um, That's honeysuckle. This is honeysuckle. My husband named that one. I shoved it in his face and said, name that. So that's what that is. So that's honeysuckle. So it's got red and pink and peach and yellow. There's a bit of brown in there. And that's on your granny pants. And that's on granny pants base. And I think I have four of those. Do you like our base names? <laughs> yeah, I think they're pretty cool, aren't they? And then we're going to call... I did think about calling the Polworth one. Just calling it Polworth at the moment. I was thinking about calling it Action Hero. Because yeah. it's a more rugged, more rugged, hard-working base. So in the Aaron, we might call that in the, when we do the Aaron one. When we do the double-knit bases. So I'm not sure yet. And then the last ones I did the day before yesterday. I thought there's not, I've not got enough tonals in my... Uh, I don't know if you can see this in the plastic. I've not got enough tonals in my... Uh, collection in the shop so I've done like a spring green I think I'll probably just call that spring green I've done them in the 50 grams I've done three 50 grams and I've done I think I've done three three 50 grams in the fancy pants and I've done I think three 20 grams in the big bloomers 20 grams in that one and then I've also done this is a tonal lemon yarn can you see it through the bag I can take it out of the bag if it's if you can't. I'll take that one out. I've just done these in the in the 50 grams for now. I took this is a tonal lemon yarn, which is very pretty. Very soft lemon and goes really well with the green. So I'm gonna do more to, I'm gonna do a few more tonals and get them in. So that'll be summer lemon or something like that when I put them in. They'll go in the next in the next update, whenever that whenever that will be, that'll probably be not this Thursday, maybe Thursday next week. Vicky, yeah, yes, because she's got bags to put in. Give her a kick; she might stay away from London. <laughs> um, so they'll probably go in next week because Nikki's got some bags in which she hasn't had a chance to get in yet. So I think somebody's calling time on the video. So that's about all I've got to show you. So just about a bit of life update. I've been a bit quiet lately, especially on Instagram. Um, I've had a couple of my followers messaging me just to ask if I'm okay. I'm okay. It's just life's been a bit bonkers lately. I've um, taken on another job. I've got two jobs now. I'm working for one of the local taxi firms and I'm doing a couple of nights. So that's hence the yawning. Um, <laughs> And I've been reading this book called The Magic of Tidying by Marie Kondo um, to help, you know, spur me on to declutter my house. You know, you purge your whole house. Um, and it's, I've literally decluttered my entire house in the space of two weeks. 
with two kids and two jobs. <laughs> so I, I'm amazed that I managed to do it. My tip man is making a fortune of me. Um, but I've been concentrating on my craft room or the office room. I bought a new unit because we did have these big triple wardrobes and everything was just thrown in and it was just a complete mess and it overshadowed our living room. Uh, our living room, the, the room. So um, on Facebook, someone was selling one of those big cube collapse systems from Ikea. So I bought that offer and it came in all the tubs. So I managed to like majorly downscale all the stuff I don't use. You know, like things that you, you might hold on to, but you've been holding on to for like five years. Um, I've got rid of. So that felt good. And now I just need the last bits to tidy away and stuff like that. So I've been doing that. And everything's just been a massive scale. Um, yeah, because uh, uh, what's making me do this is Michael's birthday is next week. And it's just spurring me on. And with kids comes more stuff. So I wanted to get rid of stuff. And all I could hear was just this noise. I just felt like everything was coming in at me. Every time I turned a corner, there was just stuff. I couldn't just put things away. I had to move stuff to fit stuff. And it was just driving me mad. So yeah, I just had to be gone. I'm trying to get everyone else to adhere in my house to this is just impossible. So, yeah. And then I've been having uh, problems with my diet. Like, not diet to lose weight, but what I can eat. Because I'm lactose intolerant and it's becoming really bad at the moment. Whereas I have to really look and think about what I'm having. Like, I've had to stop drinking wine, which actually broke what my a heart. Trauma. Actually broke my heart. <laughs> Because for some, show me. Because there's some parts for the finishing process, they use milk protein, um, which I don't really understand why. And sometimes they use eggs. But I have found this website online that um, you can put in, and if it's vegan, it means it's not had eggs used in it or milk in it. Can I just tell you something? Mentioning vegan, the ice new ice cream shop down the road, they've got at least one flavour of vegan ice cream. Oh. And she says, and when that one runs out, we'll get a different flavour. And when that one runs out, we'll get a different flavour. Sorry, that does remind me. I think we might have to go in. Anyway, um, so I um, have to be really, really careful about what I can have now. So I, my heart literally broke in two because I like wine. I'm not, I'm not going to shy away from it, I do. Um, and all the wines I like, all of milk protein through them. But I found this website, it's called Barnivore. And if it's not, it comes up if it's vegan or not vegan. Um, and if it's vegan, I can have it. So I can still have things like Lambrini and there's something like Prosecco's I can still drink, which is okay. But I've just had to, you know, stop drinking it and uh, going on to things like gin and stuff because it's my only treat. I don't do anything else. I'm not an alcoholic. No, I sound like it, but I'm not. <laughs> um, but it's been really making me poorly. So uh, there's there's milk in things that you wouldn't even think about it. Like there's milk in crisps. Like why is the milk in crisps? There is no need. It's potato <laughs> fried. <laughs> but I've been really trying to curb it, and it's been driving me bonkers because I feel like I eat nothing at the moment. Like I've just come to mum's and just eaten a tray of chicken breast because I know I can eat it. <laughs> and then on Monday I found out that I've um, had a water infection for four, you know, three to four weeks. I was in agonising pain on Monday to the point where I had to ring Ben to come home from work because I just couldn't, I couldn't stand up and I couldn't, just couldn't, couldn't function. And I went to the hospital um, for our urgent care centre, me thinking I was dieting because uh, the lady on the phone told me they were going to check me for an appendix or a prolapse. And I'm like, oh my God, poo, I don't need that. Oh my God. So I'm there messaging mum going, oh my God. <laughs> and she's like, well, this has come out of the blue. I'm like, you're telling me. Um... But when the doctor examined me, my appendix is fine and I don't have a prolapse. It was just my bladder. I've had a water infection, which luckily hasn't gone into my kidneys considering how long I've had it for. But it has been really painful and I'm on day three now. I've only been given three days worth of antibiotics. And I feel okay today. I just, I feel sick, like actually physically sick. Whereas the past two days I've just been in pain. Whereas today I feel poorly. Um, and it's rubbish. I don't like feeling like this. Three days doesn't seem enough. Yeah, but the slow release antibiotics and they're really high dose. 
And they made my pee bright yellow, like mm. illuminous yellow. <laughs> so he said that on the packet. It says, don't worry, it'll change your urine to a different colour and it's normal. I was like, okay. Do you think it would work as a wool dye? Natural yeah. colourings? <laughs> radioactive. <laughs> they might be radioactive. So I'm hoping that'll help. Uh, made me feel better so it probably all has a knock-on effect to each other you know with me problems with what I'm eating to having this infection and not know about it and it's flurrying up my IBS so I'm just boy, a big ball of a mess I've been walking around for the past three weeks looking like I'm six months pregnant and if you're driving me bananas because even when I was sat there in the hospital waiting room this little old dear across from me I'm there grabbing my stomach because I'm in pain and she's asking me when am I due and I went I had him six months ago mm. <laughs> and she's like Oops. <laughs> I'm like, it's okay, I'll let it slide. <laughs> um, but when he pressed my stomach, I nearly hit the roof because it was hurting me all up under my ribs, in between my ribs and all down my belly. And he, he was he was full on prodding me. He's like, where does it hurt? And I'm like, well, I told him where it hurt. And he goes, right, okay, does it hurt here at the side? And I'm like, no. And then at the side, no. And then he pushed it where it did hurt. And I'm like, <laughs> so... That's why I've been so quiet and why I've had no bags in the shop. No, he, no knitting. No knitting. And Michael's had an ear infection and he's been coming quite difficult to handle at the moment. So all this is a learning curve and everything's happening. And Ooh. Oh yeah, I'm still here. I'm knackered and I look like poo. But it reflects the past few weeks. <laughs> I think it's good to hear about as well for people to realise, you know, what goes on in real life, what goes on in our real life, in case it's happening, similar things happening with them. Yeah, so, hopefully, I'll take my last antibiotic tonight, hopefully the pain will bugger off, I don't know if it's the antibiotic, uh, the urine infection pain, motor infection pain, whatever it is, or my IBS that's flaring up, I've controlled it by diet for so long, Um, when I had this flare up, I had one a couple of weeks ago at work, it really made me feel poorly, but I'll put that down to the beer I had. So now I'm cutting down carbs, like beer, bread, pasta, rice, potatoes. I'm cutting all that down as well. But amidst all this, I've lost over half a stone. So that's not too bad. Just, just the wrong way. Just done it the wrong way, but it can't be helped, I suppose. And I've dropped a dress size, so that's nice. But you'll watch, I'll get better and it'll all file back on. Because I'll find wine I can drink. <laughs> Fat and happy. Yeah. Oh, well. So, yeah. That's me. And do you want to say anything else? No? Okay. Bye. Ta